Good afternoon and welcome to video three of my Corgi range review uh, for the 2019 catalogue. This video is going to include all the remaining jets, uh, World War I and helicopters and then sort of some thoughts on how I think Corgi have done. Uh, so the first one we're going to look at is one of the three new toolings and two featured in this video. And that is thankfully one I predicted, the 148 Royal Navy F4 Phantom. As expected, Corgi have done a second 148 scale jet, and this time they've chosen the Royal Naval Phantom with the long nose uh, landing gear variant. Uh, this aircraft is familiar with die cast collectors out there. Uh, for those who have the Gemini Aces version, which is um, very hard to get hold of nowadays. Uh, a bit of disappointment among die cast collectors that it's a scheme that's already been done, but I think. We can all agree that it's a very, very nice looking Phantom. Uh, there's a version out at the Ulster Aviation Museum that's just been painted up and gone on display. Um, and I believe the Corgi guys may have well even used that to sort of reflect on and make sure it's accurate. I think it'll be a good seller. It's certainly going to be a, a decent lump of die cast. The 172 version by Corgi has never really been sort of fully accepted in comparison to the Hobby Master version. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops, but I'm expecting this to be a very, very good seller and will certainly complement the two English Electric Lightnings that have already been done and have been really well received on the market. Um, if you haven't had a look, Dan has already posted some pictures of the pair he got at Christmas um, and the real detail on it is absolutely fantastic. So expect this to be quite the same. The second and strangely final jet release is probably one that's always a stalwart of every Corgi catalogue at some point, and that's the Royal Air Force Red Arrows RAF 100 version, as seen throughout its busy year this year, uh, obviously celebrating the RAF 100 celebrations throughout the country. A uh, bit of video included from the Duxford RAF air show uh, from September when the Reds, I was fortunate to meet all the Reds and get them to sign a poster for my little boy, plus two of the new air crew for this year as well. Uh, they always put on a great show and expect this as well to be a decent seller. It's never going to set the world on fire, but a Red Arrow will always sell, um, especially with the numerous previous, uh, numerous previous versions uh, that have already been released. The final three aircraft are all the World War I aircraft and also featuring the third and final new tooling, which is the Iron Decker, which is an early war uh, single monoplane uh, fighter from 1915. Looks rather quite nice, but it's obviously only the CAD photos at first. Uh, we've got a SPAD 13 of the French Air Force and then finally a Manfred von Richthofen Albatross, uh, which should sell fantastically well uh, considering the Fokker triplane that's recently just been released, sold out pretty much instantly. And we're also going to be very lucky this year to hopefully get an Albatross back on the UK um, circuit uh, with one base at Stone Maris. I believe that it's actually arrived at the Shuttleworth collection already uh, and has been assembled and it's just been waiting to be test flown. The final two aircraft are in fact helicopters and they include the RAF Wessex which is based in Sharjah which is now part of the United Arab Emirates in 1970. Uh, always bound to sell quite well the Wessex uh, and again with the Albatross we ex could expect to see one on the airshow circuit this year with the Royal Naval uh, guys hopefully getting their one airborne. And the final one is the Sea King, again another great mould by Corgi which usually sells really well. This one depicts uh, one of the USS Guadalcanal which was used in the Apollo missions to retrieve astronauts once they're ditched. Uh, so again expect this to sell pretty decently I'd imagine. So what are my opinions on this catalogue? Well, I'm being a big World War II fan, it's ticked a lot of the boxes I'd like it to tick. Um, surprise there's no Johnny Johnson, Dan Buster, Lancaster, if I was to be really honest. Really surprised there's no Mustang or P-47 or B-25 for the D-Day themes. But the aircraft they selected, it's very, very difficult to tell which ones I'm going to get because actually I'd quite like pretty much most of them. My big, big surprise is the lack of tornadoes, um, which haven't been done for the, obviously, retirement of the type at the beginning of March this year. There's a lot of talk on the forums about the special towels not being done. And if I was to really defend Colgi, I doubt they would have had a chance to get them made because they've been made later in the year of 2018. I also hope that they're now going to react to this and get two or three of those special towels out 
um, for the mid-year. I can't see them hitting by the March um, disbandment. But if they can get them out by the mid-year, it might be close enough. However, I fear that they're not going to be able to because it's just going to take too much to get them in production. But you never know. Um, it'd be nice to see if they actually listen to collectors out there and see if they can adjust or maybe put them into a collector's club or something like that, as that I know is being relaunched um, in the coming weeks. There's been quite a bit of negativity on the forums, uh, of Facebook and social media around this. Um, but I, I, you know, I would give this catalogue for me a seven or eight out of ten. It's you know it's built up a little bit of excitement beforehand. In terms of the new moulds, two completely unexpected new moulds out there. I'm not quite sure how excited people are going to be by the Iron Decker, but it's certainly an aircraft that's not been done before in this scale. And going by their World War One models, which they produce, I'm sure it's going to be really, really quite nice. Um, in terms of the bow fighter, really, really strange choice for me. Um, it's exciting because, you know, it's a lovely aircraft and a much uh, missed aircraft in terms of one being out there on a display circuit. But with the Hobbymaster one out there at a much more competitive price, is it the wisest move? Probably not. Um, in terms of correlations between Airfix moulds and then Corgi moulds, obviously the bow fight was done a couple of years ago, so again that ties in. Disappointed there's not a Hamden on there. There was rumours of a Whiteley as well being produced, but obviously neither of these have come to fruition. But there is a chance that we might see these at the half year as well. It's great to see that Corgi have done another B-17 after the success of uh, Little Miss Mischief. Uh, and also another Halifax, which again, after Vicky the Vicious Virgin, is a fant another great model, to, which I think will sell really well. It's a bit of a funny one, because unless Corgi would produce sort of 50, 60 aircraft, there was never a chance to please absolutely everybody. My only concern is that ha Hobbymaster will now jump on the bandwagon and try and see if they can knock out a tornado, as they seem to be knocking out stuff on a monthly basis. So it might cause a problem to Corgi in the long run, as they've got the monopoly on that aircraft as such um, but who knows they might hopefully they'll react and try and see if they can get something out mid-year um, but if I to be really honest I quite doubt it look I hope you've enjoyed these short reviews uh, any feedback as always please say on the Facebook pages and Instagram um, Dan will hopefully be knocking out a review at some point later today uh, and again thanks for all your support over the previous few months we wouldn't be doing this unless you guys actually bothered watching it so thanks a lot uh, and I'll speak to you soon.